fishing at a local spot today. You can see we've got the Hobie Pro Angler now that's all rigged and ready. Just going to be doing some experimenting with these soft plastics here. So we'll get out and we'll talk about those a little bit more once we're out in the water. Basically using some flathead imitation soft plastics. So I hopefully have a cracking day on the flathead. So that's the rig. That's the destination. Away we go. Well, a solo mission today at my local beach. Bit of a last minute decision. It's starting to head towards winter now, so that outdoor temperature and that water temperature is starting to really decline. So the fishing from here starts to get a little bit tougher. But it doesn't mean you can't get out there and still have really productive days on the water. So today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I've just got one or two spin rods with me. And what we are gonna be doing is just flicking some of these flathead imitation soft plastics. That is the Flat Edge 80 in the tan color. You can see it's a very, very weird shaped design. You've got the flat head wings, the, you've got the body shape, and then a little bit of a tail. So eight centimeters, got those rigged just on a 1 8 and a 1 12 of an ounce jig head. And obviously we like to get into full experimental mode this time of year because it's just a fun thing to do. So we're gonna get out in the water, hopefully get stuck into some cracking fishing action to share with you, and uh, using some flathead soft plastic imitations to hopefully get stuck into a big bag of flathead. So I have just paddled straight out to exactly five meters deep which is probably almost a kilometer out so and this grounds here is really really awesome you've got shallow flats what i'm going to be doing today is fishing with two rods most of the time but no bait at all so i'm going to have two of those flathead imitation soft plastics one will be working in my hand and one will be just as a drifter one twelfth of an ounce jig head but you'll be surprised that will definitely pick up some fish I'm stuffed, so let's get some rods out, let's get into some fish. Both the rods that I've got with me today are two to five kilo rods, perfect weight class for this style of fishing. You don't really need to go heavy, you wanna have a little bit of fun, make it enjoyable. 2,500 size reels, and I think I've got 12 pound braid on both rods and 12 pound fluorocarbon leaders. So, flathead, the biggest ones we're gonna get around here, realistically, are gonna be probably 55 centimeters. If you're very, very lucky, you might scrape the 60 centimeter mark. They don't have teeth, but they've got very bristly mouths, and they can shred up fluorocarbon leaders. So that's why we're sort of fishing that 12 pound. The water clarity is really, really murky today. So we've had four or five really bad weather days, southwesterly winds, and what's gonna to happen today is it's gonna switch around to a northerly. So we're probably not gonna have kind of clear water probably for another hour or two, and that's when I expect that the fishing will improve. So it might be a little bit of a slow start. Oh, I had a bite then. There we go, got one. There we go, on the flat edge. Tighten this drag up. There we go. Flooded. There we go. There's our first fish of the day. So that's taken about 10 minutes and we've got a flathead on a flathead soft plastic. So that's very, very cool. So that is a legal size fish, but I don't like to keep any of that are just above legal. So we're gonna get this little guy out. We'll get that soft plastic out of his gob. There he goes. And away he swims away. Let's get that plastic back out. Let's see if we can get an upgraded size one. So that one was probably 30, 31 centimeters. I'm not a big fan of keeping the smaller one. So for me, flathead, I really like to keep the one sort of between that 35 and 55 centimeter size. Obviously the big ones you really want to let go. So they're your females, they're your breeders, and those big ones I'm always really keen to put back and watch them swim away. But obviously there's nothing wrong with keeping a feeder flathead. It's a great table fish. All right, so we've got another flathead here on. Now, this one definitely feels a little bit bigger, which is good. Just working that very slowly. Oh, oh, this is a solid fish. It's just woken up actually, so I think this is a nice fish. Yeah, this is a much better flathead, so this is definitely a... There we go. Ooh. That's more like it, that's good. Whoa, there's another one. All right, so we've got a bit of a problem here. So. We're catching a lot of flathead now, and I've got one in the net, and I've got one here. So, and both keeper size flathead, so this is good. <laughs> we are on fire now. Well, that's a really good start. So we just drifted out to that spot, got the face shield on now. 
and that was three flat hit in a minute just went bang it's got one on and then both rods went off so i let the two smaller 30 size ones go and what i've done is i've marked the waypoint here so we're gonna go drift back over that line in a minute At this stage i'm gonna be content with just targeting flathead because i know it's all about playing the percentages squid do not like these really murky water clarity and we're getting onto a few flatheads so let's just start we're on again i think yeah we are oh yeah i wasn't even working that so these plastics are doing really well oh Oh, it's a good flathead. Well, there you go. That's another keeper size flathead, this one. Oh, this is a good one. Yeah, this is a really nice one. Oh, yeah. Woo. We are on fire. That is four good flathead in two minutes. <laughs> so, and there's lots and lots of stuff on the sander. I suspect there's bait everywhere. You just can't see it because the water clarity is not too good. All right, so there we go. So that is... A soft plastic out of his gob. You can see that's starting to get a bit chewed up now. So I'm not sure how durable these plastics are. You can see, obviously, Flathead have got very, very bristly mouths and they will shred leaders and everything. I mean, that's still going okay. So I think what we'll do is we'll just quickly flick this one over the side because we are, well, it's pretty frantic at the moment. So we'll just put that one over there, chuck that. Oh, we're on again, we're on again. Holy crap, this is insane. This one does not feel as big. We've got a nice, Oh, then again, yeah, no, this one's a little bit smaller. It's definitely a legal size, but the flathead are going crazy. Alrighty, so there is another really nice, good keeper size flathead, and obviously we're supporting this guy with his belly. Unfortunately, not good news for this flathead is he's definitely going in the esky because that is the perfect eating size around here. And at this rate, we are going to have a bag of flathead in no time. And for this time of year where that water temperature is really starting to get colder, where that water clarity is really murky, you can come out here, not work too hard and get yourself a good bag of flathead. That is a great day's fishing. And it's all about fishing smart because you got to go out and target the things that you know are going to be on. And that's all based on water temperature, water clarity, direction of the wind, swell, a whole heap of things. And I know today this is probably our best bet to get a good feed of fish and to get stuck into some good fishing action on those soft plastics. Play the percentages and have a fun day out in the water. All right, we are on again. There's just flathead everywhere today. Absolutely flatties everywhere. They're going crazy today. So again, this is one of these borderline legal size ones. All right, so there's another flathead on that flathead imitation soft plastic. So they're just dynamite. I wasn't even working that once, just sitting in the rod holder, just supporting his belly there. And again, these are the sort of fish that you need to make that decision. Are you going to let him go or are you going to eat him? Again, for me, this is a little bit on the smaller side. So he's definitely going to go into fight another day. I'll get that soft plastic out of his gob and uh, we'll get stuck into a few more. All right, here we go. We've got another one. So it's just been hectic. I've not been able to keep a rod in the water. You can see I've actually pulled the other rod out all of a sudden. And this is a good size one. So, oh, this is a very decent size one. And we've just drifted in now to about four and a half meters deep. Oh, this is definitely a keeper flooded. This is a good one. Oh, no. Oh, geez, they go crazy. Oh, sometimes it's nice just not having that second rod in because it's just chaos. It just gives you a moment just to deal with the fish that you're dealing with. And uh, I tell you what, these soft plastics are going great. I'm not even really working them. We're drifting at a really nice pace that I reckon those plastics are just moving on the bottom, just giving them the occasional lifts. You come out, you pick the right species, you go to the right location, and we are definitely gonna get ourselves a bag of really good sized flathead tails, which is fantastic eating. It's also great just to experiment with different stuff. So the plans are being a bit of a pest today, but uh, let's get this beautiful flathead on ice as well. Oh, ho, 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 ho. there's your fish. That one hit it, actually chased it up, that one. So I think this is a nice flathead. It's definitely a weighty one, that's for sure. This is the, the heaviest one by far. Whoa. All right, here we go. So this is a big flathead. This has gone on a couple of really big runs, which is unusual. I mean, flathead are not a powerful fighting fish, but this is very heavy so they're not going to go on massive bursts of speed oh but this is a good fish this is a really good fish at the moment it's muscling me it's definitely winning the battle at the moment 
Oh, I think this is a good, what is this? This is a good size flathead. This is a really, oh, this is a huge flathead. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> that is, that is a big flathead, yes. So we definitely want to mark this on our spot here. So mark that, call it. Oh, and there's a couple of dolphins right there. So it's all happening. Big flathead. Woo. Save. That is a good one. What an absolutely magnificent fish. Look at that. What an absolutely magnificent fish. That is just amazing. That is a flathead. Look at that. That's got that flathead imitation soft plastic in his gob. And that is a good size fish. So that is definitely over 50 centimeters. And it absolutely whacked that soft plastic. And funny enough, this big girl chased it as it was on the way up, hit it really hard. And I knew the weight of that was gonna be a really good fish. And that is a sensational flathead. So I'm absolutely thrilled with that. Out in the kayak, you're not too far out. Pick the right conditions, the right target species, clearly the right soft plastics, and you can get into some ripping fish like that. So you can see there is the soft plastic and there is my hand guys on its head. So that is a big, big fish. And the kayak for Port Phillip Bay and the shallows around Werribee, that is a brilliant fish. I've got some dolphins going right under my yak at the moment, so it's all happening. That is absolutely awesome. Now, if you're new to this style of fishing, it is really, really simple. So this is one of the easiest forms of fishing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna walk you through the whole step. So that way, if you want to, you can follow exactly what I'm doing, come out and catch yourself a good bag of fish. So as I have said, I'm fishing at my local beach. This is Werribee where I am today. What I've done on the kayak, Hobie Pro Angler 14, I've just gone straight out to about five meters deep. And that's roughly about a kilometer out. What I do have is two fishing rods with me. So I'm using a two to five kilo rod, 2,500 size reel, it's pulled with 12 pound line, and I've got one rod length of 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. I've got a one eighth of an ounce jig head that is in the size 2.0, and I've got a one twelfth of a size jig head that's in the size 2.0 on the other rod. Now, all I'm doing is I'm throwing one out and letting it just sit in the rod holder, and that is just drifting. Basically, this soft plastic is just dragging on the bottom. So opening up the bail arm, casting that out, okay, and then just closing the bail arm putting that in the rod holder, winding up the slack. Now I know that the kayak is drifting this way, which is great. It means that line is just gonna be staying outwards. That line's not gonna go slack. If the line goes slack, reverse things around because you won't know if you've got a bite. And then what I'm gonna do with this rod is I'm gonna work this one in my hand. Now, I'm gonna work this one in the other direction. And the reason why you're gonna do that is just so you don't get tangles. The last thing you wanna do is get a catch on this rod and it tangles up with that rod and you end up with a mess. Let that sink to the bottom. And then what we're gonna do is just gonna wind up a little bit of slack. Now, I've set a drift line here on my sounder where we caught all those ones before. I know that we're just gonna very, very slowly and gradually drift over those same areas where they were flathead. All we're gonna do is a couple of little gentle lifts and then wind up that slack and then let it just sit back there for another 10 or 15 seconds. You don't wanna do this process fast. Flathead are a species that like to hold the bottom. You know, they've got a strange design, obviously got the eyes which kind of look upwards. And what they're doing is they're just waiting for bait fish to go past for an easy feed. They camouflage into the bottom really, really well. And just by working it really, really slow, you're basically keeping that soft plastic in the strike zone. And you're gonna catch just as many on that drifter, which is doing absolutely nothing other than just dragging on the bottom. And that kind of proves that theory. I think where a lot of people go wrong is they start to burn the soft plastics back really really quickly the reality is there's only some species of fish locally that love the soft plastics burnt back it might be something like a salmon or a tailor but for a lot of these other species they really like the soft plastics work nice and slow and especially in these cooler water temperatures i find that the fish are just a little bit more sluggish and by keeping it there working it slower you're actually giving them more time to have a look at that soft plastic starting to get a nibble on that rod already and again here very very simple very, very repetitive technique. It's something that anyone can come out and do and really get themselves a really good bag of fish really quickly. If you're looking for a lot more tips, guys, then go to the Fishing Mad members area because we have maps, we've got reports, we've got GPS coordinates, and we've got a lot of workshops that really teach you the ins and outs of how to do all of this stuff. 
There we go, we're about to get a hit. Come on. And then what you're doing is, people say, when do I know I'm on? Well, you'll feel tap, 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 but it's really once you feel, oh, he's, he's playing with it. It's really once you start to feel a little bit of weight on that rod tip. And again, one thing that people do, which is a little bit of a mistake, is they'll feel a little bit of a nibble and they'll just strike and then burn it back in. You really wanna, there we go. Now I've got the flat it there. You really just wanna leave it there for that fish to basically set the hook itself. So that's a nice flathead that we've got here. You don't wanna take it away too quickly because all you're doing is taking that soft plastic away from that fish. So, and what's fascinating today is every time I've caught a flathead, what they're doing is they're spitting out a lot of kind of bait fish and crabs. So obviously these flathead are really actively feeding and there's lots of bait in these shallow areas at the moment. But it does also give you quite a few clues on some of the stuff that you can use to have lots of success. So in terms of soft plastic, obviously today we're having a bit of fun. We're using those flathead imitations. Obviously one of my favorites is the worm imitation. So four inch worms and seven inch worms are absolute standout. You can do things like two and a half inch grubs, three inch grubs, two and a half inch paddle tails, three inch paddle tails, four inch paddle tails. You can even jump it up to sort of four inch and five inch jerk shads. And obviously because they are spitting out crabs and things like that, you can get creative. Use crab imitations, use cranker crabs. There's a whole heap of stuff. It's about coming out here and having a little bit of fun. Flathead are a bread and butter species. They are probably the simplest thing to catch. You know what, if you can make it, and they are probably the simplest thing to catch. And, oh, and if you can have a little bit of fun with it, then, you know, that's what it's all about. Now, I think we've got onto a good one here. So, this was just the drifter. Got planes going over every five minutes today. Actually, I think both rods are on here. On then, oh, we are. Oh yeah, we've got another good fish on here. Double hook up then, so. That's yeah, another flooded. Loving these plastics, I tell you. That's another good keeper size one as well. There we go. So fishing is just absolutely frantic. I keep hearing dolphins jumping up right next to me, so I'm just sort of watching that. There's another good fish. All right, so I haven't swapped over these soft plastics yet. So these are still the same ones that I started off with. You can see now they've got bites and marks and stuff all over them, but that's still catching fish. So um, I could still probably rig that on for a little bit longer before swapping that over. So very durable. Obviously we're out here fishing a lot with, you know, things like your Berkeley scented soft plastics. And usually with those, it's pretty much replacing the soft plastic every single catch that you get. So at least that's one nice thing about these is that you can sort of catch one rig it back up and then throw it back out. Now that's not looking the prettiest, but you'd be surprised. We'll still probably catch a fish with that. And obviously you wanna always keep an eye on your bag limits and stuff as well, guys. So minimum size limit for a flathead here, obviously not dusky, dusky's a little bit different, but it's 27 centimeters. I don't know why you'd wanna keep a 27 centimeter one. We have seen a lot of other states starting to adopt bigger size flathead, which I think is a great initiative. Just because there's lots of them in the bay, doesn't mean we need to take all the smaller ones out. So as I said, for me, I'm generally only keeping the ones that are about 35 and above, and your bag limit per day is 20 flathead per person. These aeroplanes are super annoying today, but I was just putting that other flathead in the esky, and this rod was sitting in the rod holder and it is just absolutely buckled over. We've got another heavy fish here. So, oh. This has been unbelievable today. We're really not working that hard for them at all. And a lot of these fish are practically hooking themselves. Now, quite light line here. This is my lighter rod outfit. This is the Samurai. This is a four to 10 pound which is equivalent to two to five kilo. Oh, another great flathead. Another really good size flathead. So this has been unbelievable today. So we'll get that net. Oh, 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 oh. He's just, yeah, another good size fish. Look at this. Oh, that's just going crazy today. This has been an absolutely killer session. I can't believe this. And we are just catching big flathead after big flathead after big flathead. And these flathead, they are just absolutely thick because they're full of bait fish. And at the moment, just looking over the sides, you can just see there is bait everywhere. So this is prime time. What's really strange is last year, the flathead fishing around this area was exceptional late January and early February. 
This year, for whatever reason, it's now getting really good late April, early May. So really, really strange, but it doesn't matter. We're catching some ripping fish here. So look at that, all the birds behind me, they're just diving down, just eating bait everywhere because there's bait all over the surface. My sounder is just lit up. Let's have a look at this fish. And there you go. So there is another awesome size flathead. So it's just crazy how many of these good size flathead that we're catching. Great eating size flathead. And you can see today with those conditions that are flattened out now, we're working them either so slowly or they're just drifting on the bottom and these fish are just hooking themselves. So the fishing is absolutely unbelievable. The fact that there's no one out here and I've just got this all to myself is incredible. The volume of bait, the volume of fish, and uh, it's always fun to be experimenting with some different soft plastics. So, okay, let's rig up another one of these soft plastics. Close the hatch. And uh, that's just them it there. So I'll put some links into the description, guys, if you want to have a look at them. As I said, there's a whole range of different soft plastics that work for flathead. Flathead are not really fussy. Today, you sort of wonder, you know, is it this? Could I be using anything? Would I be getting the same catch rates? You never really know. What I do know is this is the right area and the right time of year. So now you do want to take your time rigging these up. And the reason is they've got a bit of a raised edge here. And I find it works best if the point of the jig head comes out like that. Okay, so take your time if you are going to get soft plastics like these. So that is a 1 12th of an ounce jig head. That is a 2 slash O. Just feed it up so that way it goes on nice and straight. And then I know I want that hook to come out at the point of that top end there. So we're just going to very slowly just put that through there. And then that hedge just slid on. And then, look at that, perfectly straight. So 1 12th of an ounce, size 2 O perfectly rigged up there. Now what you could do as well if you wanted to, you could rub a little bit of scent into that tail. That always works really, really well for flathead. Alrighty, here we go again. So straight on that waypoint that I created a couple of minutes ago, drop the soft plastic. Literally, about 10 seconds later, we are on. Here we go. I just keep coming. There's definitely another keeper. Whew. All right, so we might call it in early. So that is a bag of flathead in under 90 minutes, which is absolutely awesome. And this time of year, you start to target a lot of the same species. So out in the inshore waters in the bay, whether that's your whiting, your squid, your flathead, or your pinkies, it's great to come out and just do something a little bit different, experimenting with some gimmicky soft plastic. So that's that flat edge 80 in that tan color. And you know, it went absolutely crazy. We just caught flathead after flathead. Obviously, this style of fishing can get a little bit repetitive, but it's great to come out here, not far from home, not too far out, on a kayak, and use some fun techniques, and catch yourself a bag of fish without too much effort, and I think that's absolutely awesome. Anyway, guys, if you've enjoyed the episode, then don't forget to go and check out our members area, which is www.fishingmad.com.au forward slash member. There is lots and lots of stuff in there to help you with your fishing. We've got reports, we've got GPS marks, we've got really detailed workshops, we've got gear guides to make sure you're using the right gear in the right way to target the right species at the right time of year. We've also got giveaways, catch of the month competitions, and a lot, lot more, including some exclusive behind the scenes stuff. So really hope that you can go and check that out and support Fishing Mad. I hope that you've enjoyed the episode and I look forward to seeing you out on the water again sometime soon, maybe with some gimmicky soft plastics just like us. Anyway, guys, take care. Oh, the joys of coming in on low tide. Look at this. Now I've got to contend with all this. So this will be the worst part of the trip. And you got to watch out for rays in these areas too. Let's see if we can kind of navigate our way around through here. Oh, that tide here sucks. Mission accomplished. So just using these little soft plastics here. And what we do have ourselves is a really good feeder flathead. So there you go. There's nothing wrong with that. And look at the size of some of these fish. So that's a really, really nice size one. 90 minutes of fishing. That's what we've kept. And I'll tell you what, we let a lot of fish go today. We let the biggest one go as well. That is a good day's out fishing locally, nothing wrong with that.
If you enjoyed the episode, then become a Fishing Mad member. It's easy to join by visiting www.fishingmad.com.au forward slash member and gain access to an online portal that's full of helpful fishing content, including detailed workshops, fishing reports, rigging tutorials, podcasts, giveaways, competitions, maps, gear reviews, sounder training, exclusive videos, and much more. It's a great platform and helps to support everything we do at Fishing Mad, so become a member today.